every day we hear we are ramping up testing, we're increasing capacity for testing. But you only a couple of days ago tested 8,000. Why are we not going to get to 25,000 by the middle of April? Well, that's still our target. We hope that by mid-April we will reach 25,000. We think that within a couple of days we will reach 15,000. So production is increasing and the number of individuals being tested is rising. As I say, we now have reached the point where we have more tests available than we need for patients who are in critical conditions in hospitals. That was always our priority but on Mr. medical Jane, advice. Apologies for so interrupting, but my question was, why, is it why has it taken so long? No one is disputing that NHS workers must be made a priority. But we wouldn't need to prioritise people if we had enough tests. The first case in China was in November. The first case in the UK was in January. Why has it taken so long to get tests? Well, we've worked with manufacturers around the world and in the UK to produce as many as quickly as we can. Obviously, it's the nature of a global pandemic that there's huge demand for the tests. Testing has emerged as being absolutely critical to uh, produce an exit strategy from the virus and every other developed country in the world is ordering as many tests as they possibly so can. So we are behind them. Doing... Is, that, is that the explanation then? We got caught short because other countries were first in line to get the test. Because we know, for instance, Germany is testing 500,000 people a week. They've obviously... Is the answer that they got there first with the tests? Have we just been well, caught at the back of the queue? Well, you, you can make international comparisons, and obviously that's important, and we do compare ourselves to other countries. But as the um, medical advisers said, for example, in the press conference yesterday, there is a limit to the utility of those international comparisons because different countries pursue different strategies. Germany are testing, testing ten times. Sorry, with respect, different types with respect, of Minister, Germany is testing ten times as many of its citizens a day as we are. I mean, that is a complete disgrace. Why? Why? We're supposed to be the sixth biggest economy in the world. How have we got to a stage where Germany is testing ten times as many people, given that we now know and have known for a while that intensive testing is the absolutely crucial thing to be doing? Well, as I was saying, different countries are pursuing different strategies, testing different individuals and have different health services. That's the advice that we've had from the scientists. Why can't any of you give a straight yesterday. answer as to however, why Germany... However... Why is Germany we... doing ten times as many? I, no government minister can give a straight answer to that very simple but very important question. Why is it your chances of surviving this are ten times better in Germany right now than here because they've got the tests and we haven't? Because that's what it boils down to. Well, I'm not sure if that assertion is correct, that your chances of surviving the virus are ten times more you likely You just said yourself the so testing think, is so absolutely that, key. Is, if the testing I is key testing to saving is, lives, like, and they're doing key, ten times as but much... it's not correct to say that individuals in Germany are ten times more likely. You know, that is... You don't know that. ...the reason why... You don't know you that. ...you and I... It's why you and I, who are not uh, medics, should be cautious about making statements like that, which uh, are not founded in... Uh, in medical science. Okay, well, let's, we let's start. Want to let's have rewind. Have let's rewind. Let's start with a fact. We are do you accept? Up the do you accept, Minister? Do you accept that Germany is doing ten times as much testing? Germany is testing far more individuals than in the UK. Do you accept I'm it's doing ten that. times we, as much? We, we want to test far more people. Do you accept? We are now increasing. You want to supply. deal in facts? Do you accept that Germany is testing ten times as many people a day? Well, I don't have to hand the latest figures for Germany. I do have them for the UK, as you'd expect. And the UK's figures are that we have uh, tested um, 8,240 people on Monday. We believe that we have capacity now to test 12,750 individuals and that that can rise within a couple of days to 15,000. Okay, now, the that editor, isn't the nearly in chief, as high as we would like. Sorry to interrupt. The editor-in-chief of The Lancet, Richard Horton, 
uh, has just tweeted, the handling of the COVID-19 crisis in the UK is the most serious science policy failure in a generation. Last week, the deputy CMO said there comes a point in a pandemic where testing is not an appropriate intervention. Now it's the priority. Public message, utter confusion. Mm. How, how could we have got this so wrong? How is it that two weeks ago we were told we're not going to be testing anyone apart from seriously ill people in hospital when other countries like South Korea were testing as many people as they possibly could? Nobody can understand why we got this so wrong. Can you explain? Well, I, 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 our position has been that we wanted to get as many tests as we possibly can. We're working internationally and with British manufacturers to do that. The first priority on that device was to test those patients in critical conditions in hospitals so that you know what their condition is and therefore how to treat them. Now that we have uh, capacity over and above that, we're able to begin to test NHS staff. That's absolutely right. This weekend, we tested a small number, around 900 NHS staff, but we believe we can now begin to test thousands Mr Jenrick, I'm so sorry day. for interrupting, but you are saying the same thing over and over again. We know you are testing in hospital, the most serious cases, and we understand why. We know you are trying to test NHS workers. But NHS workers, a huge cohort of them, are not being tested. We have known about this for months. You've already admitted that we were at the back of the queue when it came to get tests. We have been caught short, and nobody understands why that is. Why didn't we get... When the WHO said test, 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 why didn't we get testing up and running so that we could comprehensively test out in the community like they're doing in Germany. What is the reason? Other than we just weren't prepared. Well, I don't think that's uh, a fair analysis, although I accept that we do need to ramp up production very significantly. Uh, it isn't easy to procure the tests in a global pandemic because there's a great deal of demand. Some countries, you mentioned Germany, have proved uh, more able to get tests. So that's partly dependent on their, the manufacturing base in their own country. Different countries have different healthcare manufacturing strengths. I think we'll see with ventilators, for example, or some of the strengths of British manufacturing coming through. We're taking receipt of the first 30 British manufactured ventilators, for example, uh, this week. How and many, have we, got, how many have we got currently in hospitals being, being used? How many are there? actually able to be used? Uh, we, we, we have around 8,000 today. We've ordered another 8,000 from existing manufacturers. And then we've worked with British manufacturers who were not previously manufacturing ventilators to increase supply from you them. You know as well as and I do, Mr Jenrick, that is nowhere near enough mm -hmm. for the tsunami of cases that is now enveloping our health system. You know that. The government knows that. And we were woefully underprepared on testing. We are woefully ill-equipped on ventilators. The PPE equipment has not reached NHS staff in the way it should have done. You know, we're going into this battle with our, with our hands behind our back, aren't we? Well, on each of these fronts, there's a lot to do, and I'm not pretending that this is going to be easy, uh, but we have been increasing production of each of those items. I mean, for example, on PPE, and again, I acknowledge that those on the front line uh, have faced a uns very unsatisfactory situation in some cases where they haven't had the supplies they need or the reassurance that they'll be available uh, in just a couple of days' time because stocks were reducing in the healthcare setting in which they work. Uh, but supply is increasing on that front as well. We have taken receipt, I think, of over 170 million items of PPE uh, in recent weeks. With PPE, the task now is primarily one of getting the supplies to the front line. And we're doing that in a number of ways, working, for example, with the military to help them to okay, move let me supplies ask you, can around I ask you the something? country that do exist. Let me ask you a specific question uh, about airports. We're still seeing many, many flights a day coming in from countries like Italy, like the United States, with very, very high COVID-19 rates. How many people are we testing at British airports when they land from these countries? Um, well, we have uh, a particular strategy with individuals who come to the UK, which is different from some other countries. So we don't test in the same way that you see in some other 
countries. We don't test at all. That is on the so basis we do, we're doing no testing at all. Is that the government of, position? It, it is on the basis. Well, it, it, it has varied at different stages. So if you land, if you virus, land right now, when it, we were in sorry, the, just to clarify, I want to we ask a specific question. We if we land, if you land, virus, if you land from Italy right now or New York City, which is being ravaged by coronavirus, and you land at a British airport, what happens to you when you land? Well, I think for most, for most of those individuals, they they wouldn't be tested. But that what, what the do reason you do with them? why that is? What do you do with the them? reason why? The, well, they they enter the country if they're able to do so. But the reason well, they just they just come in. On, there's no there's no the, there's no mandatory quarantine. There's no nothing. There's no testing. You're just letting all these well, people we, from we, countries with heavy COVID nineteen. Uh, death rates just just walk into the well, country. If you perhaps could, if you could perhaps let me answer the question. Well, can you make it? Can you just Our give me a straight answer? Is led by. Well, I haven't had any chance to give you, you an answer. Whether it was please don't or always play With that respect. card. We, the go-to card we, for all the government ministers right now is you haven't given me a chance to answer. I've asked you very simple questions. The the clear simple answer to the Heathrow and Gatwick and other airport questions is here's the question. Give me a simple answer. What do we do to the thousands of people arriving from countries with high COVID-19 when they arrive in our country? Here's the question. Do we do anything? Those individuals who have symptoms are uh, given what, uh, taken down one route. Those individuals who are not symptomatic are uh, uh, allowed to enter the country, which is... Uh, a different approach to some countries uh, have taken, but that is on the basis of medical opinion because uh, it isn't always the, a lot of the tests that you could do in an airport, like testing someone's temperature, for example, are not necessarily helpful or accurate ways of assessing whether someone has coronavirus. So we have been guided in our approach at airports, as elsewhere, by scientific and medical opinion. And I appreciate that some other countries have taken different approaches okay. there. You're but also, it's always been right yeah. that we followed the expert opinion that we've received. You're also uh, being guided to allow a lot of non-essential workers to continue going to work. And the impact of that can be seen from video taken by ITV News yesterday at North Acton Tube Station, which can show the exact effect of what that means. You know, you're telling everyone to stay at home. This is the scene at North Acton Tube Station. If you just, uh, we're just showing viewers now, uh, you'll see in a moment uh, and a staggering number of people they get off one train. They swarm off the train and then swarm on All in one tube. mass packed group. They all then stand together and they wait for another train to come and they then get on that train. That scene is being replicated all over London right now at a time when London is the epicenter of the coronavirus crisis in this country. Can you explain how the message from the government is stay at home when you have thousands of people herding onto trains like this all day long? Well, our message, and I appreciate that you take a different view, Piers, and we've had this discussion before, and I respect your view, but our message has been that you can go to work. If you can work from home, you should do so. You must do so. But if that's impossible, which it is in some occupations, then you can go to work as long as when you're in the workplace, you follow Public Health England's guidance and there is a responsibility but not, are they? On, your but they're not. on your employer to do With respect to, to you, so. Mr Jenrick, they're not following it. The guidance is two metres. None of them are two metres away from each other. So what are you going to well, do about the fact that everyone on public transport a, is simply ignoring you? There's a separate question about public transport in London and the government's uh, advice to the to TfL and to the Mayor of London has been to lay on more trains at peak times. We've also published guidance saying that employers should stagger start times so that individuals can continue to go to work, uh, but don't crowd onto the same trains if there is going to be, as there is today, a very significant reduction in the number of trains at peak times. Uh, we want to work with TfL to try to do that because it isn't right that people are going to work cheek by jowl with others on the tube. That isn't a healthy situation. But we do think, and the guidance that we've had from uh, the medics and scientists does suggest that it can be safe in some settings for people to continue to go about uh, see, their Mr. work Jerry, look, in construction, go. Go, in manufacturing but, but and in I, food I get production. This. I, get, I keep hearing this, and it, and it goes completely against what most other countries are doing. When you see those images, 
it is clearly well, I'm not it sure makes that's it complete. True, you've got, you've a, a got number, well, hang on, you've got many other countries you've got the police. That have taken similar measures to this country okay, in me, terms of restricting what we do in our leisure time have also enabled parts of the economy to continue to function I understand that. because they employ people and because they produce yeah. and do I essential that. tasks that the rest of us I understand that you decided to put economic factors ahead of health. I get that, and I don't agree with that. Well, you can't dispute it. You just said it yourself. They're going out because you want to keep the economy going, and yet they're all packing like sardines onto public transport, potentially and probably infecting each other.